Welcome to the MLB Network podcast. I'm Sierra Santos, and today we are joined by Grammy nominated producer and a huge baseball fan, Foreign Tech. How's it going, my man? It's good. It's good. How are you? Ah, oh, I'm not bad. I'm not bad. Hey, I, I, I heard that you were hitting some BP down in Studio Yeah. 42. How'd that go? Amazing. I, I think I did the best out of anybody who came here. I don't know. That's what they told me. Whoa, oh, whoa. I some bombs. I, I, they filmed it. Y'all will see. They filmed it. That, that's a lot of talk. You know who's I backed is? it up. I, I, I talked after I did it. So <laughs> it's, okay. it's on camera. It's shown. Did you hit some bombs into the stands? I did. And I don't, y'all don't see it as fans, but there's a big old ceiling full of cameras there that doesn't allow you to hit half the balls out. But if that wasn't there, I probably would hit like a nice little... So you were just respecting the equipment? Yes. I don't want to get that fine. No, of course. Yeah, you know, you don't want to have to replace anything. Because around here it is, if you break it, you, you buy it. You buy it. Oh, man, yeah, that's that's expensive. Yeah, you got the money. Look at your chain. Yeah, well, I would have had to give it up for a can. I <laughs> try to keep it. All right, let's get to what you do for a living. You've worked with Drake, Travis Scott, Post Malone, uh, Meek Mill, Bad Bunny. I could, I could go on and on and on. But... Do you have a favorite artist that you've worked with so far? Ah, you're putting me on the spot like that already? Yeah. Just off the top. Um, no softballs here. <laughs> would you say in Latin or in, or in English? Because I think it, I divide it that way, kind of. Okay, let's divide it. Um, I would say on the Spanish side, mainly because this is not a, a talent-based thing. It's more so just like this is a friend of mine on and, you know, in and outside of the studio. It would have to be Alavi Carrion. Oh, I'm a huge fan. Yeah, because, you know, we're friends. We actually do other things together besides make music. You know, we'll go play a sport. We'll go to the movies. We'll go to a theme park. Like, that's my homie. So if once we're in the studio, it's a very natural thing. Um, and I, on the, I've definitely thrown some fire emojis in his DMs. Yeah, for sure. He ain't bite back? No. You got two kids. Now it's tough. Okay. <laughs> I don't feel as bad. Um, and then on the American side, I would say um, just based on how I was treated in the studio, it would have to be Post Malone because he, he, I mean, genuinely was like the coolest person ever. He came to my house, you know, I met him like early, early on because his manager, Dre London, brought him to me after he seen me working with um, French Montana. Dre and French are cool. He met me. He's like, I have this artist. Everybody has an artist. So I'm like, all right, cool. If you have an artist, like, let's go work. And I only had a studio like at my parents' house at this time. It was like 2015. He, they had a show in Tampa when they when like White Iverson came out. Like he was just doing like local shows and stuff, and they drove him down from Tampa to West Palm where I was living and brought him to my parents' crib to make. We made a song called Too Young, at my parents' house, and man, that kid is like he's just got a golden heart. Like ever since, even after that moment, if you go through my Instagram, you scroll to like the very bottom. I kept that photo for like a remembrance. Um, it's me and him on stage at a festival called Fool's Gold. Mm -hmm. He like saw he knew I was there. I came with him and stuff. And when they when Too Young came on, he stopped the music. He's like, "Yo, the producer's here. Yo, Tech, come on." I was nervous there for sure. <laughs> you see my in the picture, my my underarms are like just wet because of uh the nervous but the nervous. You pit it out. Yeah, for sure. But he's he actually you know he showed love to the uh to the producer and a lot of guys don't do that. I feel like producers are undervalued sometimes. So those are two people that I just think have hearts of gold in and out of the studio. Okay, so you are recording at your parents' house in West Palm Beach. Yeah. With Posty. Yes. Eres dominicano? Sí, yo soy dominicano. Okay, I ¿Y thought tú? so. Yeah, no, mexicana. Mexicana. Chicana. Ahora, like, wait. <laughs> but you are recording. So, were your parents there? Did yeah. they, like, throw down? Like, did you have, like, some arroz, nah, habichuela? I, honestly, he came super guisado. late. No, nah, and my grandma, she, so my parents were born in New York. Yeah. My mom cooks, but not like my grandma. But my grandma lives with my with my parents, and she lived with us at the time. You know, when I was living there, she would have. But like, he came so late. Like he, they they came from Tampa. I think their show was over, probably like around like eleven, and they drove four hours to West Palm. Like they got to my house at like three in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Like they got there late. No, so I, everybody yeah, yeah. was asleep, but we we were banging walls. It didn't matter. Okay, so you have yet to treat him to the full. No, the boy, you know who did get that treatment was Tory Lanez. Like he was, he lived with me for like three months while we were working on a project, and he was eating my grandma's. He probably gained a little bit of weight because he was a skinny <laughs> guy. But when he was living with me, man, he was eating that good food, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. My grandma like forces you to eat. She's like, no, 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 tú tienes hambre, vamos a comer. <laughs> and I was like, I just ate. No, tú vas a comer. No, you have to eat. It is. It's, yeah. Those are the rules. Uh, what are some of your biggest musical influences? Um, you well, are. From a producer standpoint, I'm always look at you know that side, and I would have to say, I mean, I have the tattoos all over the Kanye West. I'm a huge, huge fan of his production and the way he innovated. 
like you know just use sounds to you know the way he uses samples and the way he dresses just everything he kind of elevated being a producer and an artist at the same time Timbaland is another one Pharrell um guys like Boy Wonder who's like one of the greatest producers to me of all time who stay a little bit behind the scenes but his catalog speaks for itself those are some of my like real true musical influences like I'm picky about that and I think those four are like my my Mount Rushmore you've gotten to meet him um, all of them except for, um, well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm two, two out of four because I haven't met Ye formally. He's been around an area I've been, but we never formally met, and I haven't met Pharrell. Will you pit out when you meet them both? Um, I think at this point, like, realistically speaking, I'm super jaded, uh, and it's not even, it's just, t- it's tough. <laughs> he says, nah, nah, I'm sorry. I'm I get more excited when I meet, like, ball players and musicians now because I just, you know, it's been tough. And it's like, you know, somebody, and I'm not saying them, but specifically I've just met people who I thought were once, like, my heroes. And then you meet them, and then it's like, all right, well. I know what you mean. Yeah, you know. I so, know, I know what so you mean. So it's tough. Like, I, I, I don't know what will happen. It just depends on the vibe that I get in that moment. But definitely as far as their work, I'm going to put out. But, like, as, at the end of the day, we're all humans <laughs> here, man. I can't remember the last time I got super nervous meeting somebody meeting a ball player i think probably the most excited i've gotten lately was probably meeting pedro martinez but it's like i'm sitting here i'm working alongside of him and so it's like you're supposed to be here you know yeah but you have those pinch me moments where you're like yes i get it yeah no it happens to me it's cool like even like you know with the mlb i've gotten to do some amazing things and meet players and throw out first pitches and play in the celebrity all-star game and like Leading, I think the moments leading up are more like nerve wracking than when you're actually there. Yeah. It's like you just feel like, all right, well, I'm here. Everybody else is here, so I must, I'm supposed to be here. So let's get it. Like you know, it kind of it dials in quick at this point. Like I think that was like a, in the earlier stages of my career, I would get nervous for everything and even in the moment. But now it's like I turn that off right away as soon as it's time to go. Who on your player list have you have yet to meet that you really want to? Um, Juan Soto. No, I met, I'm sorry, I met Juan Soto at the... But Man, you flex I, too much. No, I, I, I say that now because he's a Yankee, but honestly, I forgot I I really met him at the All-Star game. But um, I haven't met Judge. Okay. And then I haven't met A-Rod. A-Rod's my favorite ball player of all time. So, like, I really want to meet A-Rod. I want to meet Ken Griffey. I want to meet Barry Bonds. And Griff was at the All-Star game. Yeah, but I didn't get to see him. I played with his son, though, but I didn't really get to speak to Griffey. I saw him, like, kind of, like on the other side of the field but that doesn't count as a meeting we didn't have a conversation okay okay so it, what it counts as meeting if you've had a conversation yeah at least like a handshake you know what i'm saying that's okay. like we met okay but, um yeah those are guys that that i didn't get to meet that i would like to so you had new york met stars uh francisco lindor edwin diaz they made appearances in your latest hit Maybe. what was it like getting to work with them and tell me about the track it was amazing actually like this was an idea that kind of just got like drawn up in my head i told you know my management I was like, man, I, I, you know, for this specific video, what if we try to incorporate our relationship with MLB and bring out players? And um, we started having the conversations early. Who can we get? It's a Puerto Rican anthem. You're Dominican, so, like, how do we do this? And um, we were able to pinpoint it to the players that, that would make sense because of their relationships with the artists on the song as well. Um, and that kind of, like, it just all – it naturally, organically happened. It wasn't like we picked these players and – they were forced out there. They wanted to be a part of it because sure. their relationships with the artists. So it was awesome. And, and I think it was something that doesn't often get done. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think Vladdy's been in a few videos and stuff like that. But, art, you know, artists and, and players have really busy schedules, so it's really hard to get them aligned. It's hard to coordinate. I believe we did that during the off season. That's the reason that we were yeah. able to to get them, you know, in the video as, as quickly as we did. But, you know, once they're on go, it's – it's hard. It's tough. So Lindor, he's got one of the meanest flows in the yeah. game. Yeah, he Him did. and like Mookie Betts, right? If you could steal, There's a few of them. if you could steal one player's wardrobe, whose would it be? Oh man, that's tough. Cause I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fashion guy. It has to be an MLB player. Ah. Uh... Since we're, okay, talking, we're on the okay, baseball no, 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 topic. No, no. Okay, no, no. We'll, we'll narrow. We'll broaden it to anybody. In professional sports. If it was anybody in professional sports, it would probably be like Shy Alexander. Yeah, it'd probably be him. He's 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 nasty with it. Uh, baseball players, there's a lot of guys that, that have it on the field, so I don't really see how, how they dress off the field as much because I I feel like basketball players and stuff, you see their like their approaches more. They always have the 
the pre-game, the walk-in, the walk-in, walk-in in. fits. Yeah. Baseball is now they're showing it a little bit more, but it wasn't something yeah. that you always used to see. Some some guys just go to the field in sweats and not really care. But so I haven't really got to study people's fashion off the field. But the on-field swag, I think it's either Jazz or or Acuna. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Now you were born in New York. You grew up in Florida. So I think I know the answer to this. I think you already answered it in previous uh, questions. But who who is your favorite team? The New York Yankees. Is yeah, my favorite okay, team that's by, what I thought. By a long mm-hmm. shot. Long shot. And what about the Yankees attracted you to them? Well, I think early on, man, like, you know, my grandfather growing up was, like, my best friend, right? He um he passed away in, like, 2009. And that was, like, our connection. Baseball, you know what I'm saying? And watching Yankee games and living here and moving away to, to Florida – um, it was tough too, you know. Like I, like I was so passionate about baseball. Like leaving the Yankees is like crazy to me. And it's like, um, just a lot of like I have like a, a sharp memory, but I also like I live in the moment. So the only moments that I could really just pinpoint in life, like when I was a kid, is all baseball related. And um, it was like you know my parents taking me to Tampa, to watch like the Yankees play the Rays, and I, you know we followed. Alfonso Soriano and Derek Jeter to their hotels to get like things signed and like these like I'm crying. My parents took me to my first <laughs> Yankee game. I'm crying like these are to make me cry like it's impossible. So like that was something where like I just I, I was instantly in tears. So it's like I knew that I had a connection with the Yankees like because nothing else mattered. Like I everything could be going on outside the world, but if I'm watching the Yankees, I don't care. So uh-huh. that was just I knew it is it, them. You know. Let's that, go. Let's let's go. Let's go real deep. When's the last time you cried? Um, man, probably, like, not that, you know, it's funny, because, uh, I just, like, relationship shit was crazy at one point, like, like probably, like, a year ago, some sh- shit was going down, it was just messing with me emotionally, but that was it. Before that, though, it, happy, happy probably, tears, Yankees. Happy tears, Yankees, <laughs> like, bad tears, like, you know, like, just, like, life problems, we all got them. Yeah, you know absolutely. Man? But everything's good now, thank God, we, we in a good space. I cried about 25 minutes ago in the dressing room, oh, so... Man. I'm kidding. No, I, that's why I, I, I did hear that when I was walking. Yeah. <laughs> they were tears of joy because I was doing a podcast with Foreign Tech. Okay. What are we talking about? That. You got to live out one of your dreams. Uh, last year, you got to participate in a celebrity softball game in Seattle during All-Star Week. Yeah. You hit two bombs, my guy. Tell me. I did. Tell me. Name it all. I had to because I was talking my... Can we curse on you? No? I was talking my ish. We could, yeah, you we can. I was talking my shit. All right? Um, I was like, I was telling my guy, Josh, I was like, man, look. That's one of my dreams. I want to play in that game, so make it happen. And I got added probably like the, the week of because there was a cancellation. He's like, bro, you want to play? I was like, man, I'm let's go. And um, he's like, bro, you got to show out. If you want to stay here, if you want to do this year after year, you got to show out. I was like, brother, put the bat in my hand. So we went to BP. I think we did BP like um, where the where the uh, Seahawks play. Off-site location, yeah. Yeah, uh, loose something. I, I don't want to mess up the name of the park, but um, we, we did it there. And they saw right away, they're like, bro, like, you know, my BP session was a little different. I was bombing shit. So they're like, all right, to carry that into the game. And my first at bat, I folded. I hit a line drive at, like, who happens to be, like, an Olympic softball player. I didn't know. Um, I don't know her name, but she she snapped me off. She just caught it, no problem. I was like, oh, man. And I was, like, going back to my phone. During, was it like, Jenny? Was Jenny? It wasn't. Playing? Jenny was with me. It was, was one of her teammates. Who? Um, I don't know her name, but she, she snapped. I hit a piss rocket at her she boop she snapped it off i was like yo so i went to my phone real quick and i looked at my chats and all my guys are like oh, you got out to a girl i was like i didn't get out to a girl i got out to a fucking olympian softball player right first of all and um correction yeah so then my sec i knew after that i was like all right but i felt it when i took my swing i was like all right i connected i just didn't lift the ball i'm gonna go lift the shit out of the ball the next at bat so the next time i got up and we were getting spanked up so i was like man what's the worst that could happen i pop out I hit a freaking a rocket, a one hopper off the left field fence. So I was like, all right. Then I opened up. It's like, all right. My next at bat after that, I think I hit <clears throat> a line drive like double, but it didn't go out because I didn't lift it enough again. And then on the third at bat is when I hit it off the same girl that snapped me off. She <laughs> pitched it to me. And I was like, nah, I'm a. And we like we were within like a four or five run deficit, so the game was so winnable. I hit another one hopper, but off the center field which was like 376. That one was like to me better. The other one looked. Better was high, but that one was like a line drive, one hopper to the left center field fence. So yeah, I did my thing. You you amazing. you took note of the the range. Yeah, of 376. course. Three seventy six. If you want to look it up right now, I'm 
positive that in Seattle, there's a fence, I think, left center, 376. Your next I, tattoo, how, man. 376? But really, I was like 370. I was six feet off the fence. So okay, okay. You put 370, you put 376. Okay. This year, I'm hitting it out. Okay. Of wherever I'm at, I don't care. It's going to be I'm, Texas. Yeah, We're yeah. going to be in Texas. Yeah, that's where I'm going to be at. Um, and I'm definitely hitting it. I don't care how big the fence is, I'm hitting it out. I feel more confident this year. Who is on your team? I don't. Well, I don't think I'm allowed to speak on who's on the rosters yet. No, 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 no. Last year. This oh, last year. Um, oh, last year. I was about to say this year. I know a couple people. But last year, it was um, – Ryan Howard, Adam Jones, Jenny Finch, um, uh, jo- Siwa, jo- uh, Jojo Siwa, Jojo Siwa. Um, who else was on my team, man? Were you on? I, I was on one side. Oh, Nadia Natasha, Marcelo Nad- Hernandez. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I forgot. Nadia <laughs> Natasha and Marcelo Hernandez were on my team. Marcelo made me slip. I'll never forget that. What did he do? So, you know, I was trying to be a good friend because I knew he was going to drop the pop fly because I've seen him play. I was like, all right, he's going to drop this pop fly. I'm going to run behind him and I'm going to catch this ball. And he's going to see this and he's funny, so he's going to probably come back at me, but it's cool. They make us wear shoes, not cleats, you know, just in case anybody gets hurt. Cleats are dangerous. Sure. So those those fields were just, like, sprinkled on. Like, mm-hmm. they, they put the spray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were soaking wet. A pop-up goes to second. I see Marcelo, like, struggling to see where the ball is. I know he's not going to catch it. I'm playing shortstop. So I run behind him to back him up. That's just a baseball limit. You're supposed to do that anyway. You know, you back up your, your player. But I'm, like, looking at the ball and not looking at, you know, anything else. And I touch a wet spot on the grass and just, wow. You ate shit. Yeah, I did. But you're supposed to call me off. Like, if you see me running at you, you I got it. I got it. So I'll, he didn't say nothing. He was just focused on not dropping <laughs> the ball. In which the All ball five landed. five foot five of them. The ball landed. Let's say I'm here and he's there. The ball landed right there like smack in the middle and we just all look bad so yeah i'm gonna tell marcelo that you told the story tell him and but by the way how sweet was nothing natasha she's amazing we actually she, became good friends she's the nicest from, person from that ever. moment like we met that day but she knew who i was and you know she was like four and sit next to me like here because you know we're dominican and and she's like she was nervous she was like you know she never played and she just got dragged and so she's like man just sit next to me i feel better with you i was like all right let's go and then uh, they put her in left field, which is kind of tough because, like, people pull the shit out of the ball into left field. So I was like, bro, don't worry. Just, like, if they – and I I went and I played left center. So I was like, all right, if they hit the ball at you, just, like, I got you. And they kept they, – they hit, like, two balls at her, and I just ran. They, I, I'm sure sprinted. there's a clip. I sprinted from left center and ended up going foul, but I ran past her and, like, ended up at the foul line trying to make a play. Like, I was not going to let my dog get hit, man. She's cool. Well, maybe you should look into coaching this next uh, All Star game. Man, yeah, I think once I'm done playing, I wanna, I wanna. Get myself <laughs> off. He, well, you he know, you can actually play. It. Like when I retire, well, when I retire well, from Jenny, the celebrity All Star game. Jenny and Ryan were coaching. Um, no, Jenny was coaching, and then who coached for the other team? I forgot. Uh, I think it was, it was like Brett Boone, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but they were playing, so if I can coach and play, I got you. Okay. Give me the lineup card. I'm gonna make this happen. <laughs> we're benching Marcelo. <laughs> All right. He's he's on the bench, my boy. I oh, love you. No. We're probably cousins. We got the same last name. Oh, but. <laughs> poor Marcelo. Okay. He's he's a funny dude though. He is, yeah, he's gonna he's, get me for that. That's what I'm doing. I'm picking at the at the bear right now, I'm poking at him. Good. And he'll come back at you. I might end up on Saturday Night Live with a skit. You never know. So it's cool. I'm gonna poke at you, Marcelo. It's fine. We love you. Hey, would you like to do SNL one day? I'd like to do everything that involves being on the stage where I get to show what I do. So a hundred percent. I love that. Okay, we're we're keeping with playing ball. Is it true that you play for the number one ranked slow pitch softball team? Uh, then you did your research. I did last year. Actually, it was my team. I actually got a. So, I'm 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 competitive. I'm heavy into this. So my first year playing, we had a team and we didn't do that great. There was a team that was way better than us. So I was like, all right, next year I'm gonna make a team, and we're gonna be the best team. So I went. I got a sponsor. It was Rima Sports, which is like Bad Bunny and Noah's agency for uh baseball they funded like our uniforms our travel everything so like obviously guys wanted to come play and we made a team and we just ransacked through everybody but mid-year it, was, it just became too much i was working too much and we stopped playing but for like five months you we were the quit one. you quit your own team no nah, a lot of guys they wanted to play more and i couldn't play as much so they like started going playing other places and stuff you quit but, you quit your nah, own i didn't quit man i'm still playing now i'm, I'm going back i'm playing this month I love that. That's like that keeps mm-hmm. me grounded because on the softball field, like everybody knows, like I'm one of y'all. Like we don't even talk music. We don't do nothing. We talk softball. That's my off switch. 
okay, let's okay. Softball is the off switch. Off switch. Uh, right. You played in a softball tournament in Puerto Rico with your good friend Vladdy Jr. I was supposed to. I did not. Make and then he he got too busy. Do you, you know understand why? <laughs> like, <laughs> no, uh, I would have loved to. And I told Vlad, and Vladdy's my good friend. I was just with Vladdy last week. Um, so you were scheduled. I was scheduled. I was supposed to go. They had my flight, my room. I had to cancel last minute. And trust me, I don't. You're that cancel. guy. You're that I, guy. My guys are here. You can ask them after. I will cancel everything in the world for softball. Is he? Is he? D- well, he he gets play. mad at me. He's like, bro, it's so I'm like, I don't care. Like, th- this means more to me right now. I'm going to play softball. Trust me, I wanted to, to go. Like, I just couldn't. But I wanted to go. What What was bigger than playing softball I, with Vladdy? I Vladi? had some sessions that I had to, t- you know, get done. And if I went to the game, that means I don't turn stuff in. And Okay. That's valid. It, it, it was work versus play. Unfortunately, in that moment. Usually, I always choose play if they, in that situation. But it was like, that, I couldn't. I couldn't. I had to. Okay, so maybe I'm playing this year. You're gonna play yeah, this year. Yeah, yeah. 100%. And it's in, it. What is it in? Um, um in the Clemente's. Uh, is part, it? But it's in February, right? Something like that. Man, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you. I don't remember when it when it was supposed to be, but it's off season. Yeah, so it's it's between so. like what October and February. I think that's the same time as the Don't Blink Home Run Derby happens in the Bahamas. I think it's oh, around the same time. Could be. That's the one that jazz in them. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I they went. hit into the water, right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's dope. I haven't seen, like I haven't been to to that, but I, and they I was never invited, but I would love to. How is that? I what's just the, I'm inviting you right now. Awesome. You're invited to go next year. And I'm coming. But how? What's the what's the deal? Why do they hit into the water? Because there's guys on jet skis shagging the balls. Wow. And what happens when Jazz Chisholm hits a 119 exit velo? Then you better at your jet ski. You better ride the hell out of that little like jet that. ski, my friend. All right. And anyway, what if you just ride the hell into the ball? Because <laughs> <laughs> you don't know where them shits are going. I don't know that you're gonna. You're but gonna you know be, what? I would be one. Of, like if you're I'm gonna not hitting, shag balls. I'll go shag balls. Yeah. You're like, gonna find out. And you know what? I'm probably gonna be the idiot that just eats my words right now, and I get. Yeah, you'll see how hard it is. Yeah, that's fine. That's cool. I'm not much of a, a jet ski captain. You know what I'm saying? Like a jet ski rider. So. You, Okay, so we have the things you would like to accomplish, uh, perhaps coach in the future for the celebrity softball yeah, game. Yeah, I want to play every year. Every year, okay. Uh, you would like to potentially make a guest appearance on SNL. Yeah, hundred percent. You you would like to meet uh, Pharrell? Yay! Yeah. What is next though for Foreign Tech? Um, I'm really like trying to transition into just like full on like artistry as far as like not just producing on people's projects. I'm always, that's always going to be a part of what I do that got me to where I'm at, but I want to put out more of my own records. Um, I'm considering doing a project as an artist, not like as a producer artist, but as an artist in English though. Um, that's always been my thing. Like just like straight up R and B music in English, R and B like rap, um, so I want to do that. I'm going to do that. And also just put put more effort into my own singles because it's tough. It's it's a lot of work. It takes sometimes a couple months to get a song out because when I'm just producing and putting out records, I have to wait for verses to get turned yep. in. I have to wait for clearances to get handled. So it's a lot, but I just want to have so many built up that we could just drop every, you know, every month on the money, just dropping music. So I'm just trying to become more consistent at that and build my brand so people know who I am and what I've done by by face and not just by oh like I've heard your name or I know your tag I know your resume but I've never seen you so like you know we're just working on that day by day all right well learn this face he's coming for you <laughs> foreign tech thanks we're so here. much for joining us thank you for having me it's awesome